Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will share my experience of building a gaming system in 2020. So in this video, I will go through every component and explain why I chose them. So let's get started. Before building the system, I was using an Intel i3 based laptop for all my works. It had 12 GB of DDR3 RAM and 256 GB of solid state drive. So as compared to this system, my new system is a huge update. The parts for this system were bought from Prime ABGB, which is one of the best seller in Lamington Road, Mumbai, and their prices are cheaper as compared to Amazon. They also have an online store, so if you are from India, you can order parts online from them. So for the CPU, I went with Ryzen 3600. I got it for around 15,600 rupees. It has 6 cores and 12 threads and is recommended by most of the system builders. I could have gone with Ryzen 5 3600X but for 2000 rupees extra it doesn't give bigger boost. So Ryzen 3600 was my choice for this build. If you are tighter on the budget you can also choose Ryzen 5 3500 which is cheaper as compared to Ryzen 5 3600. For motherboard I went with B450 chipset. For B450 MSI makes one of the best performance board. So the motherboard of choice was MSI B450 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. I got it for 11600 rupees. The reason for this board was that it has better VRM. So in case if I want to overclock the CPU, the motherboard will give better stability. It also has an Intel Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built-in, so no need to add extra network hardware. If you want to save money here, you can opt for a MSI B450 Tomahawk, which has similar VRM and has better RAM overclocking capability. If in case you want to future-proof the build for PCI Gen 4, you can choose ASUS Prime X570P, which is 5000 rupees higher than MSI B450. It has X570 chipset, which will enable PCI Gen 4. For GPU, I chose Gigabyte WinForce RTX 2060 Super with two fans, and the price was around 32,000 rupees. If you want a cheaper option, you can opt for a Galaxy 2060 Super, which is available for around 28 to 29,000 rupees, and has RGB. If 2060 Super is out of your budget, you can check RTX 2060 which is now available at lower price than Super. You can also buy a Nvidia 1660 Super if you are too tight on the budget. I am not recommending AMD cards because currently there are few driver issues with it. There is one issue with this Gigabyte card that is the cooling system forces all the air on the top of the card so the glass on the front gets too hot. This is not a major issue but it is something that you should know before buying it. For RAM, I went with 32GB of Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB with 3200MHz which cost around 14,300 rupees with tested cache latency of 18 and SPD cache latency of 15. You can also buy G-Skill Trident Z but they are priced much higher as compared to Corsair Vengeance Kit. The RAM is installed in dual channel configuration leaving two empty slots on motherboard. For NVMe storage, I am using a Gigabyte M.2 NVMe drive which cost around 4000 rupees. You can choose any NVMe drive here and you will not be wrong if you choose NVMe drive from any other reputed brand. For storage, I am using 2TB of Seagate Barracuda drive. So finally for PSU, I chose Gigabyte 700W semi-modular power supply. Price was around 4100 rupees. Now I know 700W is not required for the system, but it gives some headroom for upgrading. The power supply was cheaper as compared to other power supplies and also is semi-modular. For case, I went with Kula Master Masterbox MB520, which I got for 5600 rupees. It has 3 RGB fans at the front and one non-RGB fan at rear. It also has a tempered glass side panel along with shroud for power supply. It is easy to do cable management and I guess it is also possible to fit a liquid cooling setup in this case. At the top you can add a 120 or 140 mm fans or a radiator. Being tempered glass, the side panel shows fingerprint marks which needs to be cleaned from time to time. At the front, there is a filter to gather dust which also needs to be cleaned in like 2-4 to four days. You also get a mesh filter on the top to keep the dust away. Overall, the case is best for first time builders. I have not included a cooler in my PC build because I thought it won't be necessary. But I was wrong. More on that in the next video. Now enjoy the build process.
so finally the build was successful and i was working fine the next video will be on the cpu cooler the current ryzen durage stell cooler that we get in the box is not capable of cooling the cpu You've made some upgrades, but you'll need more than a weapon to cross the many perils of Dathomir. Climbable, but not without equipment. Die! <laughs> Can't believe we made it. You sure know how to have fun.
I'm going in! Got your back! Big tracks, come on! Set it forward! Rolling back! Crowd jeeps inbound! Move the ah. Top is clear! Work to the dirt! Shit, there's more on the street! Daniels, you take the door. Got it! Where'd they go? They must have run when they heard us coming. Crouch left some supplies. Stock up before we get to the tower. Hey, that's no sus. How come Jews don't go to church? Shit! MG on the second floor! Get the cover! Get down! Get down! Got one! Second floor! Coming from the back!
empty. Reload. Drop position spotted. If you are interested in stuff like this, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.